against the White Sox. It'll be Kent Merker against Jim Parquet in game one. Back with the rest of the starting lineups right after this. Nesson's exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. By United Parcel Service, moving at the speed of business. By Dunkin' Donuts, nothing says morning like Dunkin' Donuts. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you, but three most important words are, hey, beer man. By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And by Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas. Mobile Speed Pass It's free, and it's only at Mobile. Actually turning into a pretty nice day here in Chicago. Bright sun overhead, a little bit of uh, fleecy clouds. Truly really much better than yesterday. We had all kinds of rain in the first game of this three-game series between the Red Sox and the Chicago White Sox was washed up. But there's baseball for you today. As a matter of fact, we'll play two. The Red Sox and White Sox. And again, the Red Sox magic number is one. The Red Sox here in game one. We'll send Jose Offerman in the leadoff spot. He'll be at second base. John Valentin follows at third. Omar Garcia Parra hits third. He plays shortstop. Then Mike Stanley follows at the cleanup spot. It's Butch Husky, the designated hitter. Roy O'Leary is in left field. Jason Veritek gets the call behind the plate. Damon Buford in center and Darren Lewis in right. And the defense in game one for the White Sox. It'll be Craig Wilson at third base. Mike Caruso, the shortstop. Ray Durham at second and Paul Konerko at first base. Left to right, Darren Jackson, Chris Singleton, and Maglio Adonias. Brooke Fordyce behind the plate. And on the mound, left-handed Jim Parquet. This will be start number 30 on the season for Parquet. He is 9-14 and 14 with a 5.10 ERA. He has uh, really, really struggled the second half of this season. He got off to a pretty good start for the White Sox, but uh, that second half has just been an absolute disaster for him. Look at the numbers, 8-5 and five, April through June, but since that All-Star break in July, 1-9 and nine with a 6.58 ERA. He's faced the Red Sox three times this season. He's got a couple of losses and a no decision against Boston. His last win came on July the 7th against Kansas City. So the left-hander will go for the White Sox. The umps in game one. Dale Scott calls the balls and strikes for us. He'll be behind the plate. It'll be Bill Miller working at first base. Al Clark is the second base umpire. And Brian Onora over third. Harry Manuel wrapping up his second year as the manager of the Chicago White Sox. Things have gone a little more difficult this time around. He's broken in a lot of rookies. Minus a lot of his big guns from a year ago. His first year, he won 80, lost 82. The White Sox come in to play today. 71 wins on the year and 85 losses. White Sox playing a little better baseball as of late. Jimmy Williams closing in on the postseason for the second time in as many years. Skipper doesn't want to talk postseason. He keeps saying we've got work to do, and that they do. They need one more. So Jose Offerman all set to lead it off for the Sox. John Valentin, Nomar Garcia Parra to follow here against left-hander Jim Parquet as we get underway in inning number one. First pitch of the ball game is in for a called strike on Offerman, who checks in at 292 on the year, seven homers and 67 runs batted in. Quickly, two strikes on Offerman. Strange feeling as you get underway in this Twinite doubleheader. Probably, Jerry, have about 150, maybe 200 people in the seats. This reminds me, Bob, of uh, one of those B games in spring training, the one they play about 10 o'clock in the morning, and then, of course, the main game starts at 1 o'clock. There's a base hit by Offerman. Goes the opposite way. Ray Durham chasing it out to shallow right field. Couldn't catch up with it. And Offerman has a leadoff single. One thing that has improved for Offerman over this uh, second half of the season is uh, batting from the right side of the plate. Good job there. Quickly down by a couple of strikes. And then just to trying to make contact, slices the ball to the opposite field for the base hit. Leadoff man aboard for the Red Sox. Here's John Valentin returning to the lineup tonight. 252, a dozen homers for John. 70 runs batted in. Rips it to third base, right on a line to Craig Wilson. Wilson makes the catch, and there's one out. Valentin had the day off Sunday. Back in the starting lineup here for game one here against the White Sox this afternoon. One on, one out. Here's Nomar Garcia Parra. Came to the ballpark yesterday. Jimmy Williams had his lineup posted in the Red Sox clubhouse, and Nomar was not in the starting lineup yesterday. 
Right wrist apparently has improved enough, so no mark can play here against the White Sox tonight. RK missing down low, one ball, no strikes. 356 for Garcia Parra, 26 homers, 102 runs batted in. That's fouled back. Count is even a ball and a strike. Nomar starts today at 356. Derek G to second at 349. And Edgar Martinez is third at 342. Jim Parquet, 23-year-old left-hander, going here for the White Sox in game one. Montanerco there holds at first base with Jose Offerman. Pop wide, two and one now. The count on Garcia Parra. If you saw ESPN last night on SportsCenter, one of the questions they were asking Jerry, who was the most valuable duo, and the, that was the question of the night. And Omar Garcia Parra and Pedro Martinez of the White Sox captured better than 44 percent of the vote, and they were rated the number one duo in the majors. As this one is ripped by Nomar to left field. That's off the wall. Played it for 347 sign by Darren Jackson. Moving to third is Offerman. And Garcia Parra checks into second base with a double. High changeup that time by Parquet. And Nomar just missed a home run. Right at that 347 mark down the line. About halfway up the fence. For Nomar, it'll be his 42nd double. That puts him one behind the league leader, Jermaine Dye. Darren Jackson quickly getting the bell back into the cutoff man and uh, Wendell Kim has to hold off from in at third base. 42nd double of the year for Garcia Parra. Sox have runners at second and third. Mike Stanley at the plate and Stanley fouls it back. 284 for Stanley 18 homers on the year and 69 runs batted in. One ball, one strike. Fly ball here, left field. Darren Jackson goes over. He will make the catch. Tagging at third base is Jose Offerman. He comes in to score on the sacrifice fly by Stanley. And the Red Sox grab the lead, 1-0. Now Stanley picks up his 70th RBI of the season. He has been one of the hottest Red Sox hitters in the month of September. A high fastball, a good pitch for Stanley to lift in the air, and he'll get it deep enough to get Offerman home and give the Red Sox the one nothing lead. It's like a tennis match, Bob. You know, very quiet. Butch Husky looks at ball one. Red Sox have won six of the nine meetings with the White Sox this year. Husky hitting 282, 22 homers between Boston and Seattle and 76 runs batted in. One ball, one strike. A couple of home runs for Husky in his last three games. Garcia Parr at second base with two outs, a run in for the Sox. They've got a 1-0 lead over Chicago here at the top of the first. Husky rips that one, fair ball. Towards the corner in left field, Garcia Parr rounds third. He heads home, and Butch Husky will cruise into second base with a stand-up double. It's 2-0 Boston. Well, so far in this game, Parquet has not been able to get the ball down, and as long as he stays up in the zone that he's pitching in now, the Red Sox are going to score a bunch of runs. Here's a curveball, just hangs out over the plate, and Husky right down that third base line for the double. Everything that he has featured so far to Red Sox hitters have been uh, belt high or above, and that's not going to get the job done. Single by Offerman, doubles by Garcia Parr and Husky. The Red Sox have a 2 0 lead. Left fielder Troy O'Leary at the plate. O'Leary takes strike one. 
284 for Troy leads the Red Sox with 28 homers one better in the RBI column and Nomar Garcia Parra with those 103. Little number here back to Parquet. Parquet will throw over to Canerco at first base. That retires aside. Red Sox get two runs in the inning. On three hits, they have themselves a 2-0 lead with the White Sox coming up. Two in the run column for the Red Sox. They lead 2-0. White Sox bat here, bottom half of the first inning. Gary Manuel's lineup card looks like this tonight for the Pale Hose. Mike Caruso is the shortstop. He will lead off, followed by Craig Wilson at third base. Ray Durham bats third. Aglio Ordonez in the cleanup spot. Carlos Lee, the designated hitter. Chris Singleton plays center field. Paul Canerco at first base. Aaron Jackson in left. And Brooke Fordyce bats ninth. He'll handle the catching chores. And a defense in game one for the Red Sox. John Ballantin will be at third base. Nomar Garcia, part of the shortstop. Jose Offerman at second and Mike Stanley at first. In the outfield, Troy O'Leary, Damon Buford, and Darren Lewis. Jason Veritek behind the plate. And on the mound, left-hander Kent Merker. Stat number five, a record of 1-0, 3.60 ERA. Last time out for Merka was against Toronto and lasted four and two-thirds in that ball game, giving up four earned runs. Red Sox eventually lost at 7-5. Merka not happy in that game about his changeup. Had a lot of trouble getting that pitch down and something he was going to work on between starts with uh, Joe Kerrigan. Well, Merker is 6-5 and five this year with St. Louis. 1-0 and oh so far as a member of the Red Sox. Has been staked to a two-run lead as the White Sox bat here, bottom of the first inning. Mike Caruso to lead off. Craig Wilson, Ray Durham to follow. Always aware of the bunt when Caruso's at the plate. He's got 18 bunt singles this season. 52 for Caruso. A couple of homers. 35 runs batted in. First pitch of the afternoon for Merker is in for a called strike. White Sox come into the ball game. 71 wins, 85 losses on the year. They're second to Cleveland, but 24 and a half games behind the Indians who closed the White Sox out in the American League Central a long time ago. One ball, two strikes. Two and two now on the leadoff hitter for Chicago in the race for best record in the American League this year. Cleveland is on top in that derby, 96-61. The Yankees are one behind at 95-62 and two back Texas, 94 and 63. Playoffs were to begin tomorrow and the Red Sox were to qualify with a win here in this one. They would open still at Cleveland. Ground ball over Merker's head, backhanded at second base by Jose Offerman. Scratch at Stanley at first base and in time to get Caruso. There's one out. Oh, what a great play by Offerman. Uh, that Caruso's got very good speed getting down the line, and uh, Offerman on a very difficult play, still able to throw him out by a couple of feet. This ball get over the head of Merker, I thought for sure, a base hit, but watch uh, Offerman to the back end, and that strong arm, that shortstop arm from second base to get the out at first. Nice play. One out here, bottom of the first. Here's Craig Wilson, the third baseman. Thirty six on the year four homers and twenty six runs batted in. This has not been the best of years here in Chicago although the White Sox have won their last three and seven of their last eleven ball games. Prior to that, they had dropped 16 of 19. Here's a shot into the corner in right field. Chased down out there by Darren Lewis. Craig Wilson goes for two, and he will go in with a one-out double. You know, Craig Wilson has four home runs on the season. Two of those came against the Red Sox in a ball game earlier this season at Fenway Park. Nice inside-out swing here. The ball is away from him. He'll slap it right down that right field line. Quite a few doubles here in the first inning. Nomar with a double, Husky with a double. Now, Craig Wilson with a double.
Place is starting to fill up now, Bob. I see at least five more people coming in. Great Durham at the plate. Durham takes the call strike. This is reminiscent of those uh, games we used to do in Cleveland when they would have the why night double headers following the rain out the night before. Only Cleveland had 80,000 seats, about 45,000 here at Comiskey Park. One ball, one strike here on Durham. Durham brings the 302 average into the ball game tonight. This is the Red Sox first double header of the year. This is the seventh twin bill for the Chicago White Sox. They've had a stretch of real bad rather here in the early in the season of a double header is really piled up. Rio two for Durham 13 homers and 60 runs batted in. Red Sox fans and they have just about the upper deck all to themselves. Come on, Ray, your pitch. The old time baseball announcers would say Jerry if you're in the neighborhood drop in there are plenty of seats. <laughs> I guess you'd have time in Boston to hop a plane and get here for game two wouldn't you? Back again by Durham. Still three balls, two strikes. Plus, no more Frank Thomas in the lineup for the uh, White Sox, having surgery on that foot. Out for the remainder of the season. Durham uh, moving into that number three spot in the batting order. Thomas and uh, Manuel, a rocky relationship this year on a couple of occasions. First gets Durham after checking Wilson back to second base. There are two gone. I guess for the most part of the year, uh, the manager wanted Frank Thomas to uh, play first base. Frank wanted a DH because he had that uh, painful foot problem. And there was a case uh, later on when he called on Thomas to pinch hit in a ball game, and Frank didn't feel like he could do it because of the uh, the foot problem. That caused a lot of problems. They sent him back home and eventually had the surgery. Been a different year for Manuel this year. Remember last year he had Albert Bell, Robin Ventura, and uh, Frank Thomas as his big three hitters. A little more veterans around here a year ago. A lot more rookies this time around for the White Sox. They've had 12 different players make their major league debuts here in 1999. As they say, they build for the future. Greg Wilson at second base, two outs here, home half the first. Maglio Ordonez at the plate for the White Sox. Helps Merker by chasing that one. You see that ball's two strikes. See that guard he's wearing on his left shin. Uh, game prior to the off day, yes, they fouled the ball off the shin, had to be taken out of the ball game. Probably would not have played last night had this be a regular game been played. Good player right here. Has him down on the count. Two strikes. Ordonez will follow back. Good chance for a souvenir if you're in the crowd here at Comiskey Park. The odds are good. <laughs> Walk down a couple rows, pick it up, go back to your seat. Nice and easy. Greg Wilson with a double. He's at second base with two outs. Sox have a 2-0 lead over Chicago here in the bottom of the first inning. Ordonez fouls off another one. Sunny and cool here in the Windy City. It will probably get uh, much cooler, obviously, as the doubleheader goes on. Low expected to... Uh, be in the upper 40s here in Chicago tonight. That Maple Leafs jersey probably will come in handy. One ball, two strikes. A large group coming in here, a group of about 15.
Parker missing down and away. Two balls, two strikes to count. Out of the 212 people here, Jerry, I think about 54 of them have Red Sox hats. The Red Sox are well represented here, at least percentage-wise, in a small gathering as Mer Merker misses out and away. 3-2, Volkan and Ordonez. That's that changeup we were talking about that last time out had trouble with. Again, that's the last changeup high. Studying the lineup tonight. I'm called by plate umpire Dale Scott. the full count on Ordonez. Wilson at second base, two outs, a 2-0 Red Sox lead here in the bottom of the first inning. The U fan, in addition to the Red Sox. is one by Ordonez. Two on now with two outs. Ordonez draws the two-out walk. Going to bring a visit from Joe Kerrigan, the Red Sox pitching coach. A long first inning. A couple of runs for the Red Sox, a threat for the White Sox. Merker struggled his last outing against Toronto on September 23rd at Fenway, going four and two-thirds innings. Walks hurt him in that one as he walked four in that game. His first start since coming back following that collision with Wilton Barris out on the West Coast at Seattle. Pat Rapp scheduled to go in game two today for the Red Sox. And uh, after that, the pitching situation kind of up in the air, depending on if the Red Sox clinch. Uh, we may see some changes. Uh, Pedro would probably pitch maybe an inning or two uh, come Friday or Saturday against Baltimore. Just a little tune up uh, before the start of the playoffs. Two on, two outs. Here's Carlos Lee, the designated hitter. Which certainly won't get Jimmy Williams to say that. He doesn't want to talk about anything past today. 95 for Carlos Lee, 14 homers and 77 runs batted in. And he continues to say, we still have work to do. Club has a 2-0 lead here, bottom half of the first inning, but Kent Merker is struggling with a lot of pitches. Down on strikes goes Lee, and that will retire beside. White Sox will strand a pair. One complete here in game one. And Merker and the Red Sox up on Chicago, 2-0. Back in Chicago, Red Sox 2-0 lead. Let's take a look at the batting leaders brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Nomar at 357, Derek Jeter 349, Martinez 342, Bernie Williams, and Manny Ramirez the top five in the American League. Red Sox enjoying a 2-0 lead. Jason Veritek leads off here, top of the second inning. It'll be Veritek followed by Damon Buford and then Darren Lewis. Battle of the left-handers here in game one at Comiskey Park. Jim Parquet matched up against the Red Sox' Ken Merker. Excellent offensive numbers for Veritek, 273 with 19 homers and 74 runs batted in. Veritek had a couple of hits, including his 19th home run of the year, and the Red Sox win on Sunday at Fenway Park. Has a four-game hitting streak and has hit at a 314 clip now since the All-Star break. Chops this one foul down the third baseline. High a batting average for Veritek from the right side of the plate, 290. More power from the left side. 16 of his 19 home runs as a left-handed hitter. back on the screen. The game was called rather early here yesterday. 
ESPN has opened up a new sports zone uh, sports bar restaurant here in the Chicago area. Number the Red Sox going there last night. They had a private room to watch the Oakland A's battle the Anaheim Angels. One home run giving Anaheim the early lead, but Oakland coming back to win last night 9-3 is Veritek thrown out here by Craig Wilson, and there's one out in the second. They didn't call the game off early enough, though. We could have saved 40 bucks had they done it about a half hour earlier. 20 bucks to get out here and 20 bucks to get back. Watched it rain all the way out, watched it rain all the way back. But a much nicer day today in Chicago for the doubleheader as Damon Buford comes to the plate for the Red Sox. Most of the gray clouds are out. Bright blue overhead as it's fouled back off the mask of Fordyce. And Buford's down two strikes. Still pretty cloudy this morning when I poke my nose out of the hotel. The waves really crashing down there in Lake Michigan. But a much nicer day as the day has gone on. Strike three called. Strike out of the afternoon for Parquet. Back to a curveball that time for Parquet. Started away from that right-handed hitter and tried to pick up the outside corner. It's a pitch the right-hander will quit on. And that time uh, picks up the corner for the strikeout. Number nine hitter for the Sox, the right fielder Darren Lewis. 44 for Darren, a couple of home runs, 38 runs batted in. Jim Parquet is 0-8 in 12 starts since the All-Star break. And has not won since July the 7th when he beat Kansas City. Two with one no decision against the Red Sox this year. 3 0 pitch to Lewis, taking all the way. There's a strike. Missed away, ball four. Red Sox will get a base runner with two outs when we go to the top of the order and Jose Offerman. Five hitter at Fenway, a 263 hitter. Offerman has been this year on the road. Takes a called strike from Parquet. Offerman opened the game with a single to right, scored the Red Sox first run. Lewis has the green light here with two outs and if he feels like he can get a good jump to try to get himself in the scoring position. 16 steals. Second on the Red Sox. Offerman leads with 18 then Nomar with 14. Which is a ball the throw down from Fordyce in time to nail Lewis at second base to end the inning. A strike by Fordyce. Aaron Lewis is caught stealing and that'll end the Red Sox second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We played one and a half here in game one. Red Sox lead the White Sox 2-0. Back here at Comiskey Park at 2-0 Red Sox lead. White Sox bat here, home half the second. Chris Singleton to lead it off. Paul Canerco and Darren Jackson to follow. 
And Merker threw a lot of pitches in the first inning, was able to keep the White Sox off the scoreboard. Singleton at the plate. One ball, one strike. He's a 300 hitter this year. He has 17 homers, 72 runs batted in. Candidate for Rookie of the Year in the American League. Carlos Beltran of Kansas City remains the favorite. Others with a very good shot this year. Jeff Zimmerman down at Texas. Tim Hudson has done very well in a half a season in the Oakland starting rotation. A lot of talk about the possibility of Singleton uh, being a candidate for rookie in. He's got some great numbers, Bob. 300 batting average, 72 runs batted in. Can steal a base. He's got 19 steals. Hit for the cycle earlier this year against Kansas City. Fly ball left field. Roy O'Leary makes the catch. One out. out here in the White Sox second inning Paul Canerco two ninety two for Canerco this year twenty three homers and seventy six runs batted in three times in the White Sox last game a win up at Minnesota and hit his 23rd home run of the season Sunday in Minneapolis there's a first homer for Canerco since August the 30th against Seattle White Sox eighth in the American League in hitting their 11th in run scored their 10th in home runs Stairs, it's three and one. Not before Jerry about perhaps ongoing auditions for certain Red Sox starters for a spot in the postseason starting rotation. You obviously Pedro has the number one thing wrapped up. Red Saber Hagen number two, but things a little unsettled after that. My guess, Bob, is it's going to be, uh, they'd love, I think, Merkert to take one of those spots to have a left-handed in the rotation, uh, something the Red Sox really have not had just about all season. And the way Ramon Martinez has pitched the last couple of times out, he's uh, certainly a possibility. You've got Tim Wakefield, you've got Pat Rapp, although you would think Rapp may be a, a long man uh, out of the bullpen. Your bullpen spots that are nailed down. Real Cormier is the left-handed specialist. Rich Garces, Rod Beck, and Derek Lowe, they've all pitched well. The other thing, too, is uh, Merka could also go to the bullpen, and you'd have both. Uh, managers like to have two lefties out there, especially from about that sixth, seventh inning on. has to walk. Isn't that easy to pick up a souvenir that way? Didn't even really have to hurry. Not a mad rush uh, for it right now. <laughs> a little slow at the concession stand. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Merker gets his man. Canerco goes down on strikes. Second strikeout of the night afternoon for Kent Merker. That's a good change up that time. You'll notice uh, the ball down and also tailing away from Canerco. Very good change up that time by Merker. 
I think he'd like to prefer to have it a little bit more outside, but at least was in a good location down low. Two outs in the Chicago second. Darren Jackson, the left fielder, is the batter. Jackson spent some time on the disabled list each year from late July to mid-August with a back problem. The veteran player that uh, Manuel likes a lot, and he likes having him on his team because he's very good with the young players. Modest numbers for the year, 273, four homers and 14 runs batted in. Drives this one to left field, over and in, and off the glove out in left field of Old Erie. And going to, for two now is Darren Jackson. He will go in with a two-out double. Almost a one-handed swing by Jackson on the changeup from Kent Merker. Looked like for a second O'Leary may make a shoestring catch on it. Instead, it's going to bounce away, and a good hustle by Jackson. He'll find himself in scoring position. He's just protecting the plate, trying to avoid a strikeout, and makes the contact, the line drive, and nice effort by O'Leary, but he'll end up at second base. Runner in scoring position with two outs for the White Sox. Brooke Fordyce, Chicago catcher, will file it back towards the upper deck. 91 for Fordyce, eight homers, 45 runs batted in. White Sox picked him up from Cincinnati right at the end of spring training this year. And at second base, two outs. Bottom half of the second inning. Red Sox lead the White Sox 2-0. Fordyce lifts it in the air to center field. Damon Buford has it tracked for Boston. He is there, makes the catch, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, one left. Two complete here in the Windy City. Red Sox lead the White Sox 2-0. Back at Comiskey Park in Chicago, the Red Sox have the 2-0 lead after two. Well, what's brewing tomorrow night in the front row? Well, the hockey season is here, and the Bruins are once again counting on old number 77 to lead in the quest for Lord Stanley. We'll find out what makes Bork so special as he enters his 21st NHL season. And Rhode Island was the host to this year's Gravity Games, meet the street luges, skateboarders, and bike riders that tore up the tracks and streets of Providence. Don't miss a minute tomorrow night at 6.30 in the front row. Here at Comiskey Park tonight, the Red Sox have a 2-0 lead. Magic number is one. Jose Offerman leads off here, top of the third inning. Takes a called strike from Chicago lefty Jim Parquet. Offerman 269 from the right side this year with three of his seven home runs. Offerman was at the plate, you recall, when Darren Lewis was caught stealing to end the top of the second inning. the ball game with a single to right came in on the sacrifice fly by Mike Stanley back in the first inning as the Red Sox jumped to a one nothing lead. Sox got two in the first sacrifice fly by Stanley RBI double by Butch Husky and with two nothing lead over Chicago. Offerman here draws a lead off walk in the third. Contreras, the pitching coach for the Chicago White Sox, former pitching coach of the Seattle Mariners, took this job halfway through last season after being fired by Seattle. Now fired by Seattle after a particularly rough weekend by the Mariners' bullpen at Fenway Park. John Valentin looks at ball one. Valentin lined out to Wilson at third base back in the first inning. John is 0 for 1 so far tonight. Oh. 
one and one on Valentin. Fouls it back to the mezzanine. One ball and two strikes to count. Come on, aboard with a leadoff walk. Down of a ball and two strikes here on John Ballantin as the Red Sox open the third. Ballington called out on strikes. Parquet with the fastball over the inside corner. Parquet picks up his second strikeout. That Butte put on the curveball in the second inning. This time the inside fastball right on that inside corner to Valentin. Two strikes on John trying to protect the plate, thinking about the ball away. Instead, zips that fastball inside to pick up the strikeout. Thing we've noticed about Parquet in his starts against the Red Sox, he's not afraid to come inside against right handers. He comes inside there against Nomar. Nomar has had a torrid month of September, 396 on the year. Again, leads the American League in hitting coming into play tonight. Eric Jeter, the Yankees, has a tough task later on tonight. He'll be facing Mike Mussina. And Camden Yards. Offerman held by Canerco at first base. He's there with one out. 2 0 pitch here to Nomar. And it's outside for ball three. 18 steals, but caught 12 times this year, Jose Offerman. That's a strike if an ease. Three and one on Garcia Parra. Doubled, scored a run back in the first inning. Three one pitch. Loop to left field, charging on to make the catch there is Darren Jackson. Hustling back to first base is Jose Offerman. Garcia Parra out and a fly ball to Jackson and left. Two going for the Red Sox here in the third. Looks like it was going to be a gapper for Nomar, but it wouldn't sink. Just kind of hung up long enough to give Jackson a chance to get over and make the play on it. Then it looked like Jackson was going to be able to get a double play on Offerman. Offerman also thinking the ball was going to drop in. He was right around second base and had to scurry back to first. Uh, not to be doubled up. That throws a little bit off the mark anyway. Ball wouldn't sink. Need off walk for Offerman. He's still at first base. Two outs later. Here's Mike Stanley. Side corner for a strike. Stanley got the first run of the game home for the Red Sox with his sacrifice fly to Darren Jackson in left field back in the first inning. and the Red Sox win Monday over Baltimore at Fenway Park. Now has a seven-game hitting streak. Parquet this time missing away as he falls behind two and one. Parquet, sandwich pick between the first and second rounds by the White Sox back in 1997. Drafted out of UCLA. Go 
been an effective pitch for Parquet. That fastball on the inner half. Two and two the count. for ball three. Parquet is 23 years of age, a native of California. Three two pitch, Stanley rifles it to center field. Singleton goes back, catches the line drive, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Two and a half played here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. Red Sox with the advantage, 2-0. Back here at Comiskey Park, a 2-0 lead for Ken Merker and the Red Sox. As the White Sox come to bat here, bottom half the third. Top of the order here, Caruso, who has a number of bunt base hits this year. Bunted and missed that one, one strike the count. Infield hits this year. Guzman of Minnesota, 38. Then comes Homer Bush and his great speed at Toronto. And then Caruso. Ground ball right down the first baseline. Stays fair. And Merker comes up with the ball and tags out Caruso. Looked like it was going to kick foul, but never did. It was foul. It looked like it was in foul territory and then hit a divot and came back into fair territory. Caruso thought it was going to be a foul ball. He stopped running. You can see a tap down that first baseline, and you'll see it is in foul territory. That's why Caruso stopped. There's the bounce back to fair territory, and Merker will tag him out. Merker might have hurt himself, too, uh, making that tag, maybe in the fingers. It was on September the 6th that Merker ran into Wilton Veras out on the West Coast, suffered the rib cage injury. Jam the fingers there with a tag on Caruso. We'll take another look at it. Here you see right here, it's in foul territory, and there's that bounce back in the fair territory, and Rooker just standing right there to pick up the baseball and apply that tag at the same time. Looks like everything's okay with Merker. So one out here in the White Sox third, Craig Wilson, the Chicago third baseman, looks at ball one. Wilson had a couple home runs against the Red Sox at a game earlier this year. That was on June 27th at Fenway Park. and home runs coming off Tim Wakefield. That's a strike. White Sox won that game 7-6 at Fenway on June the 27th. White Sox are 3-6 and six against Boston this year. Two pitch grounded to short. Nomar Garcia Parra backhands it up to Stanley. And there are two outs for Chicago here in the third inning. Now, the one good thing for Nomar, it doesn't look like that uh, wrist is bothering him throwing the first base. You still see that he's got it wrapped with that white tape, but uh, apparently no problem throwing the ball. Ground ball by Wilson uh, to the right of Nomar, the backhand. And then that good strong throw across to Diamond right at Mike Stanley to get the out. Omar hit by Reyes of Baltimore, you recall, last Sunday at Fenway Park. Checking in there with second base umpire Al Clark. Ray Durham here, bats for the White Sox, takes one up high. Royal 
O'Leary back in the sunshine in left field to make that catch. Had a shield his eyes. That retires the side. One, two, three, go the White Sox in the third. Three complete here at Comiskey Park. Red Sox two, Chicago nothing. Back here at Comiskey Park in Chicago, the Red Sox have a 2-0 lead over the White Sox. We go to the top of the fourth any time now for our Aflac trivia question. Who is the only man to manage both the Red Sox and the White Sox? The only man to manage both the Red Sox and the White Sox will have the answer for you the next half inning. Coach Husky leads off here for Boston. Troy O'Leary, Jason Baratek to follow. Husky rifled a double into the left field corner. His first at bat to score Nomar Garcia Par. Give the Sox a 2 0 lead. It's still 2 0 as Butch leads off the fourth here against left hander Jim Parquet. So we're talking about the last inning where Parquet will work inside against those right handers, try to keep them off the plate. Towards third, Craig Wilson makes the play and throws out Butch Husky. One gone here in the fourth inning. Where's Wally, by the way? I haven't seen him since we uh, left the ballpark yesterday following the rainout. Well, he's been very nervous about this clinching game, and he said he wanted to watch part of the game from the stands. The White Sox said they would hook him up with some good seats, but I don't... Oh, there he is. Holy mackerel, where is he? Well, that's quite the seat they gave him. His connections apparently here aren't too good, huh? What's he got up there? Some popcorn and uh, a Coke, I guess. Roy O'Leary fouls back. Where is the upper deck, right? Way up the top in the upper deck. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Still smiling, but uh, I think the White Sox could have done a little better with their seating. get him a little closer to home plate. Why didn't he want to sit in here? He's nervous. He wants to get this clincher over with. Roy O'Leary fouls it behind the plate. Wardice comes back, but that's on the screen. Still two balls, two strikes. Looks like O'Leary may have cracked the bat on that uh, foul ball. Red Sox, as mentioned, have a six game to three edge on Chicago in the season series. They've outscored Chicago this year 62 to 28. They had that one game back on June 26 where they scored the 11 runs in the first inning at Fenway Park and beat Chicago 17 to 1 that day. You have to remember this next time the White Sox come to Fenway. We'll see where their family passes end up. Lurie had a notion. They make the appeal there to Brian O'Nor at third base. He said Troy did not go. So it's a full count on O'Leary. Batting here with the bases empty and one out in the top of the fourth. 3-2 pitch. Chopped foul. And back of Dave Jouse in the first base coaching box and down the right field line. Red Sox with 90 wins, 66 losses on the year. They're five and a half up on Oakland with six games to play. They're four and a half behind the Yankees. Barquet missing inside to the left-handed hitting O'Leary, and that's the third walk issued by Barquet in the game. Wally hit Rush Street last night? No. no a little, little something with Oprah, but we'll save that for game two. Uh, not very pleasant either. Enjoying himself so far, although the seat's not too good. As you mentioned, he has that perpetual smile. Knox with a base runner, one out here in the fourth inning. Jason Veritek, who grounded out to Wilson at third, back in the second inning, 0 for 1. Two 
runs three hits for the Red Sox no runs two hits so far for the White Sox. That wrap goes for the Red Sox in game two. Aaron Mayette will get the starting call for Chicago. Already the 70th pitch of the game for Parquet, and it's outside, up and away from Jason Veritek. It's 3-0. Okay, the first player selected in the June 97 draft to reach the majors, made his debut halfway through last year. Jason Veritek here pops it up to right field. Long run for Ardonez will not get there, and that's just foul right down the right field line. First base umpire Bill Miller going out to make the call. Veritek going after the 3 0 pitch and fouling it down the right field line. <laughs> 3 1 to Veritek. It's popped up. Ray Durham backing up on the outfield grass makes the call and the catch two outs for the Sox here in the fourth. A lot of pitches for Parquet here into the fourth inning but still only the two runs and three hits for the Red Sox. All three of those hits coming back in the first inning. 72 pitches thus far for the 23 year old lefty. Pitch strike to Damon Buford. In the hole at short, Caruso makes the play. The throw down to second base, and it's in time for the force out on Troy O'Leary to end the inning. That's about the only play Caruso had. Does get O'Leary at second base on the force to end the top of the fourth. We play three and a half here in Chicago. Wally taking it in along with about 200 others here in game one. It's 2 nothing Red Sox. Back here at Kabiski Park, bottom half of the fourth inning. A 2 nothing lead for the Red Sox. Time to answer our Aflac trivia question now. Who is the only man to manage both the Red Sox and the Chicago White Sox? Hugh Duffy. Paul Carroll back. Hugh Duffy, the White Sox, 1910, 1911, Boston, 1921, and 1922. That one stumped us. Hugh Duffy, the only man to manage both the Red Sox and the White Sox. And Merker has a 2-0 lead. Bottom half of the fourth inning, Maglio Ordonez leads off for Chicago. Ordonez rocks this one down the right field line, and that's foul. Long run for Darren Lewis. A lot of Red Sox fans on hand here for the ball game tonight. Including a gentleman we have upstairs here in our broadcast booth, Dan Lucier, who is a native of Foxborough, Massachusetts, now works for the Chicago Blackhawks, and he has been kind enough to drop by and visit Jerry and I. He's kept in touch via telephone, watches all the games over direct TV, and is going to drop off a chair for us from the Chicago Stadium, the old home of the Blackhawks. Here's Ordonez with a liner to right. And in to play it on one hop out there is Darren Lewis. Ordonez reaches to open the fourth inning. That's the third White Sox hit. A little bit of a scuffle recently for Ordonez uh, getting base hit, so he must appreciate this one. Uh, Darren Lewis with a nice effort. He'll go into the slide, but only be able to knock the ball down. And Ordonez at first base with a leadoff single here in the fourth. Lead off man on for Chicago. Carlos Lee, the designated hitter at the plate. And we, Jerry, right here in the broadcast booth, have an authentic seat from Chicago Stadium. Is that one of the cheap seats or is that know. a box seat? Or what is that? Second balcony. Selkin, second balcony. Looks like it's gotten a lot of use over the years. This one is fouled back. I don't know if we can get a shot of it here. This thing sort of beat up. Looks like one of the seats at the old Boston Garden. You can see her. Here you go. Look at that. 
That's a classic. We were talking about the closing of Tiger Stadium earlier and some of the ballparks closing around Major League Baseball this year and how we try and pick up artifacts from each and every one of them. I don't know how I'm going to get this home, Dan. <laughs> to take it to Camden Yards and then sort of lug it along. But we certainly thank you. Now Dan has watched a lot of our telecasts. He was saying he was watching the ball game from Toronto when Jerry brought the hot dog wrapper from Tiger Stadium in Detroit over to Toronto. Mentioned we had a brick from uh, the Boston Garden, one brick from the old Detroit Olympia. This is Jose Offerman going back for the Red Sox, making the catch, and there's one out. There's another good change up by Merka down and away from Malie. Difficult play for Offerman. I think that breeze blowing the ball back out to a right field. And I think it might have surprised Jose a little bit. He's kind of uh, coasting back now, but has to turn it on a little bit and uh, still able to make the catch. Again, Offerman very good at those pop-ups in the outfield. One out here in the fourth inning. Here's Chris Singleton. Singleton takes one up and away. One ball, no strikes. Do you ever save anything, Jerry, from the old ballparks? I think I have a brick from uh, Comiskey across the street. That's about it. <laughs> I don't even know where that is now. <laughs> I'm not big on the uh, the memorabilia stuff. My favorite one was the brick from the Boston Garden. I had the brick and then I drove by the garden and noticed most of it was still standing and I was wondering where the brick actually came from. Here's a base hit by Singleton to right field. Ordonias will stop at second base and there's two aboard with one out. And so many of the old ballparks are going out now. They closed Tiger Stadium in Detroit earlier this week. Recon Park in San Francisco is going out. The Astrodome down in Houston will be closing its doors. Next year, County Stadium in Milwaukee. There was a time when the old parks used to go just quietly, like when they closed Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. I mean, there was no major celebration. They just basically played the last game there and then moved over to the new ballpark. And then nostalgia became the wave. Detroit the other day had a sellout crowd. Actually, they had sellout crowds all three games over the weekend against Kansas City as they closed the doors on Tiger Stadium. You remember the emotional farewell that we in New England gave to the Boston Garden when the Bruins and Celtics closed that building and moved to the Fleet Center? You can only imagine when the new Fenway opens and the old Fenway closes, the ceremonies that will take place in old Fenway Park at the time. Certainly, Jerry, you'd want a brick from Fenway. If there's one left over, I'll take it, but uh, we'll see how that goes. One ball, one strike. Paul Canerco was a strikeout victim back in the second inning. And Merker given a 2-0 lead by the Red Sox. They've got two in the top of the first. Keep looking at this chair. The hot dog wrapper was easy. The chair is going to be a little more difficult to transport. Now you'll find a way, I'm sure. center field went pretty well hit and Buford right in front of the outfield fence flags it down tagging at second base and moving to third is Ordonez. Now Merka got away with one there that was a high pitch a high change up and Kernerka will chase uh, Buford all the way back to the wall that's not the location Merka wants that pitch and it was almost a three run home run that ball just kept carrying and carrying and finally Buford out toward the fence to make the catch. Ordonez tags at second he'll move up a base to third now with two outs. 
inconsistent uh, for Merka with that off-speed pitch. He's thrown some very good ones that have been down in the zone, but again, a couple like that last one. He's fortunate that ball stayed in the ballpark. First and third now with two outs. That leaves it up to Darren Jackson, who swings and misses. Jackson doubled to left. He's one for one so far in the ball game. Another easy souvenir. Pays to get here early. Another one pop foul. Couple of hits, they've both been for extra bases for Jackson against Merker in his career. And called by Dale Scott behind the plate. Sox again with two in the first inning. Sacrifice fly by Stanley. Two out double by Butch Husky, a 2 0 lead for Ken Merker as he faces the White Sox here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Waste that one up high. One ball and two strikes. Five pitches already in the ball game for Merker. Both Merker and Parquet throwing a few here in the first game of a doubleheader. Matt Rapp and Aaron Mayette to go in game two. Runner goes. One two pitch is down low for ball two. It's a stole to base for Chris Singleton. Well, he picked a good pitch to go on. He got the change up from Merker uh, down in the dirt, and uh, for a check had no play at all. So now the potential tying run in scoring position for the White Sox. And a full cow and on the hitter Jackson. Jackson was down nothing and two and now has worked the count full. Three two pitch. This could be trouble for the Red Sox coming on as O'Leary will not get there in time and two runs will score on the place. Golden Base pays dividends. Jackson bloops a single to left and just like that the ball game's tied 2-2. Now that's just about the same kind of swing he had last time. He got the double in the second inning. Once again it's the change up and again it's about a one handed swing by Darren Jackson just trying to protect the plate. Soft line drive it'll drop in front of O'Leary and with the steal the White Sox tie the game at two. Adonias will score and Singleton to follow and it's a whole new ball game. Red Sox two in the first White Sox two here in the fourth. Two runs three hits for the Red Sox two runs five hits now for the White Sox. Oh, they've got him picked off. Aaron Jackson in a rundown, and Jackson is tagged out to end the inning, but his two-run single ties things. We're 2-2 here after four. Nesson's exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by your New England Ford dealers. Stop by your New England Ford dealer for great savings on new Ford cars and trucks. By Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. By Gillette Mach 3, the first triple blade razor. By Hertz, nobody does it exactly like Hertz. By Heineken, it's all about the beer, Heineken. And by Bell Atlantic Mobile, the cell phone is only as good as the network it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. Cool but sunny here in Chicago today. Comiskey Park, first to two. The Red Sox and the White Sox are tied 2-2 as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Battle of the left-handers, Kent Merker against Jim Parquet. 
Omar Garcia Parra has a double, has scored a run. Darren Jackson has a two run single. That tied things up in the bottom half of the fourth. So it's a 2 2 ball game as we head to the fifth. Darren Lewis to lead it off against Jim Parquet. Then back to the top of the order, Jose Offerman and John Valentin. Singleton in center field is there. One pitch, one gone here to start the fifth. I mentioned we had Dan Lucier, formerly of Foxborough, in the broadcast booth with us. He's with the Chicago Blackhawks, informed us of Tom Johnson, the old Bruin. Undergoing back surgery, the Blackhawks, along with Dan, want to send him their best wishes as he recovers. We certainly want to add to that. Look forward to seeing Tom up and around again at the Fleet Center. Bruins, of course, will open here on Nesson Saturday night. Dropping the puck against the Carolina Hurricane in the game you can see at 7 o'clock. Dan's mother, Joan, lives down on the Cape. Want to send our best to her as well. Red Sox two, White Sox two. Top half the fifth here at Comiskey. Jose Offerman swings and misses. Now we'll see how Paquet reacts. His team comes back to tie the ball game up. He got a quick out with Lewis. He's quickly ahead of Offerman. And so far, single to right, scored a run in the first, walked in the third. to right field. Ordonez is there, makes the catch. Couple of fly ball out, served up by Parquet in the fifth inning. <laughs> Two outs, John Ballanton bats. ball from Parquet for a strike. Valentin 0 for 2 tonight. He's lined out to Wilson at third and was called out on strikes. Red Sox two runs, three hits. Everything happening back in the first inning. Red Sox do not have a hit since the first. Parquet has walked three. The 1-1 from the Chicago lefty skips that one up there. 2-1 and one now the count. That'll even things at 2-2 two and two on Valentin. Well, he's pitching a little bit better than uh, the numbers would indicate in the second half of the season for Parquet. Reaches out, rolls it foul down the third baseline. So still two balls, two strikes. Sox in the first inning got a single from Offerman, a double from Garcia Parra, sacrifice fly from Stanley, and a double from Butch Husky. Resulting in two runs, they have not had a hit since. shoots a foul past Wendell Kim. Still two balls, two strikes. Hey. 
There's a base hit past the dive of Durham into center field. Two out single for Valentin. That'll give Nomar Garcia Parra a chance here in the Red Sox fifth inning. The battle put on by Valentin and added back. Uh, fouled off pitches inside, away, and finally uh, on a pitch away will hit it hard. Pass Ray Durham at second base. Give Nomar a chance here with a couple of outs. Good at bat by Valentin. First hit for the Red Sox since back in that first inning. Red Sox get a base runner with two outs in the fifth, and here's Nomar. One for two so far in the game. Up and in on Garcia Parra. One ball, no strikes. Nomar 356 on the year. Derek Jeter next in line at 349 in the American League batting derby. Again, Jeter facing the Orioles and Mike Mucina tonight at Camden Yards. Nomar hits this one pretty good to left field. Jackson is back at the wall at the 375 sign. Gone! A home run for Garcia Parra. And the Red Sox reclaim the lead, four to two. Allenton's two out single extends the inning and Nomar Garcia Parra puts it into the left field seats and the Red Sox catapult into the lead 4-2 over the over the White Sox. Now two huge at bats for the Red Sox. First Valentin to keep the inning alive, give Nomar a chance, and then Nomar with home run number 27, RBIs 103 and 104 to once again give the Red Sox that two-run lead. So the White Sox tie it up. Right back come the Red Sox to take the lead. Mike Stanley takes one outside. One ball, no strikes. There's a base hit by Stanley. Red Sox have gone three innings without a base hit. First two batters retired here in the fifth and three straight hits. Single by Valentin. Home run by Garcia Parra. Now the single by Stanley. Well, Nomar almost has two home runs in this ball game. Remember that double he hit back in the first inning was about halfway up the uh, left field wall. This time, no question about it. High and deep. And that's going to start to get some activity out in that bullpen for the White Sox. More look at the Garcia Parra home run swing. See that almost no stride by Nomar. Very quick hands. And that'll be out toward that White Sox bullpen and above the bullpen in the bleaches. Wally has moved seating locations. He's got something he's studying. Is that a scorecard? Oh, I see what he's. All those guys right there are scouts. You know, of course, the Red Sox going to postseason play. And what you have is you have a lot of scouts from the National League teams and also Cleveland, New York, and uh, all the teams involved in the American League, Texas. You've got Arizona scouts. So what he's doing, he's probably uh, taking a peek at what they're writing down about the Red Sox and relay that to the Red Sox. So a little espionage here for Wally. And a much better seat location than he had earlier. The yeah, White Sox took care of him. He can get some information down there. Butch Husky bats here for Boston. Husky so far double driving in a run in the first inning bounced out to Wilson at third base in the fourth. One ball one strike. Get a scorecard. These are all surrounded by scouts. That guy there to his left, he has at the clock, he's timing all the runners. Ninety five pitches for Parquet. Husky pops it up. Ray Durham 
Backing up on the outfield grass. Durham will make the catch. That retires the side, but Sox get two on the home run by Nomar Garcia Parra. They break the tie, and the Red Sox have the lead 4 2 after four and a half. Now back here, bottom half of the fifth inning, a 4-2 lead for the Red Sox over the White Sox. Time now to check out what's on tap. Brought to you by Heineken. Coming up after this one, game two right here on Nesson. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, also on Nesson. And on to Baltimore for the weekend. Friday, Nesson. Saturday, the JCS New England Television Network. And Sunday at 1.30, the regular season finale back on Nesson. Sox have a 4-2 lead. Brooke Fordyce leading off here against Kent Merker in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Goes after the first pitch, pops it up. Garcia Parra back on the outfield grass. Nomar is there, makes the catch, and there's one going. Well, now we'll see how Merker responds to uh, regaining the lead at 4-2. Both left-handers with a lot of pitches in this ball game, but a uh, fairly low score. Sox with two in the first inning, two more in the fifth. They've got the 4-2 lead. Mike Caruso at the top of the order takes one down and away. One ball, no strikes. Caruso 0 for 2 so far. He's grounded out to offer him at second base, then bounced one right down the first baseline that Merker handled unassisted in third with the tag. Merker here, high in the air, and throws Caruso out over at first. So Merker helps his own cause. Two outs here in the fifth. Nice play. Red Sox have a bunch of pretty good fielding pitchers and Merker the latest nice play is uh, he'll fall off to that third base side which helps being a left handed pitcher. We'll threw the ball away at first base but uh, still had plenty of time to get Caruso. Nice vertical leap by Merker. Two quick outs Craig Wilson the White Sox third baseman bats. And has it doubled in two trips. Two strikes. And the full count on Wilson. Bases empty, two outs, bottom half of the fifth inning. of two here at Comiskey Park. Payoff pitch, ground ball in the hold at short, came up on Nomar, knocks it down, recovers, throws, not nearly in time to get Wilson, who will reach with two outs. So he got a bad hop right at the end. He uh, went down properly for the backhand, had the glove low to the ground, but the ball's going to bounce up and hit him, uh, look like on the arm somewhere. He's a good position to make the play. It just bounces right off the glove, and that's going to go as an error on Garcia Parra. Well, he's had a couple of uh, tough errors recently on those backhanded plays. Had a tough error at Fenway Park the other day. Picks up one here tonight at Comiskey. 17 errors total now on the season for Garcia Parra. Ray Durham bats for Chicago. Durham has bounced back to Merker and has flied out to O'Leary in left field. He's over two.
pitching on the air with two outs here in the fifth inning. All over there by Stanley. If you're ahead of Durham, two strikes. We'll waste one up and away. One ball, two strikes now the count. Six wins as a starter for St. Louis this year. He's won his only decision with the Red Sox. Fly ball here, right field. Darren Lewis will run it down, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, one error, one left. Five complete here in Chicago in game one. Red Sox lead the White Sox 4-2. Back here at Comiskey Park, top half the sixth inning, a 4-2 lead for the Red Sox over the Chicago White Sox. Don't forget the Bruins season over. That comes your way Saturday. Bruins in Carolina. They'll drop the puck at 7 o'clock. Rose Merakian and the entire Nesson crew back to welcome the Bruins for the 1999-2000 season. I'm Karen with Bruins Digest for you at 6.30. Dale and Gord with the call of the game following at 7. Roy O'Leary leads off here in the sixth inning. One strike on O'Leary. Jason Veritek, Damon Buford to follow. Bruins at 7 o'clock. Bruins Digest returns at 6.30. The half-hour pregame show, which will be hosted by Tom Karen, will lead you right up to the opening faceoff. Two balls, two strikes. Red Sox with six games remaining, including this one tonight, and then followed by the second half of the doubleheader, one here in Chicago tomorrow, and then three in Baltimore over the weekend to wrap up the regular season. O'Leary serves a base hit to left field. Up and goes the opposite way. Lead-off single here in the sixth. Let's go to our Nesson Studios. Welcome Bob Rogers to our broadcast. Bob? All right, Bob, good evening, guys. Hello again, everybody. Last night, Sammy Sosa belted his 62nd home run to regain the Major League lead. Just moments ago, Mark McGuire right back on top again as well. That's number 62 for him. Game, by the way, is 3-2 in the sixth. It's the first game of the doubleheader. And a doubleheader, of course, here at Comiskey Park as well. Red Sox leading 4-2 here in game one. There we aboard with the leadoff single. Jason Veritek at the plate. Veritek with the bunt, drops it back. Arkay will make the play unassisted. Bunt works to perfection. O'Leary in scoring position with one out. Jimmy Williams playing for another run here in the middle part of the ball game. Veritek with the nice sacrifice. Trying to get that ball down the first base line. Not quite that far down the line, but Parquet only had the one play, and that was to get Jason at first base, so he gets the job done and gets a man in scoring position. is Damon Buford. Short hop by Wilson at third. He throws a Buford out. No advancement by O'Leary. O'Leary stuck there now at second with two gone. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to try to go to third, but then was not sure. And when you're not sure, you're best to stay in scoring position at second base. A little impatient for Damon Buford that time, picking on that first curveball for the ground out. Leary at second base, two outs. That leaves it up to Darren Lewis. Lewis walked in the second, was caught stealing by Fordyce to end the inning, and then flied out to Singleton in center field in the fifth. about hit the White Sox 7-5 they have a 4-2 lead thanks to the two run homer by Nomar Garcia Parra a lot 
lot of you are joining us late as you make your way home from work. The A's last night uh, fell behind 2 nothing to Anaheim. Came back to win that game 9-3, so the Red Sox magic number is still one. Sox took a 2 nothing lead here in the first uh, inning of the first game of the doubleheader. Chicago back to tie it up, and then Omar Garcia Parra's two-run homer in the fifth inning gave the Red Sox the 4-2 lead that they enjoy here in the sixth. Troy O'Leary at second base with two outs. Two balls, two strikes on Darren Lewis. Matt Rapp will go for the Red Sox in game two. Round ball down the first baseline foul. Tell you what, you've got to be careful on the uh, ground balls right tight on the line because we saw one earlier bounce back in a fair territory. That ball almost uh, bounced back. Chewed up but down those baselines. Very small baselines here, and the reason for that is they have a guy at the top of the order, Caruso, that likes to bunt. So the more grass out there, the better for the bunters, and uh, they have very little dirt from that grass to the uh, white line. It actually hurt Caruso earlier in the ball game when he dribbled one down the first baseline and kicked fair. And Ken Merker was able to tag Caruso out. Two and two, the count on Darren Lewis. Okay, just missing with that one, it's a full count. Breaks, rolled to third. Wilson short hops it. His throw over to Canerco at first base in time to get Lewis. And that'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, one left. We've played five and a half here in the Windy City of Chicago. The Red Sox have the lead, 4-2. Back here in Chicago, bottom half, the sixth inning in game one. The Red Sox, whose magic number is one, have a 4-2 lead over the White Sox. Magli Ordonez reading Kent Merker. Line drive, base hit, left field. Ordonia is a perfect two for two, plus a walk now in the game. Red Sox uh, have some activity going in the bullpen. It actually started prior to Ordonia's coming to the plate. Ordonia's picks up his second hit. He's been on base three times as uh, Rich Garces starts to loosen for Boston. Carlos Lee at the plate here for Chicago. Sends one foul down the right field line. Oh, nice play. One hot, tough high hop and uh, one uh, terrific play. Merker comes back with strike two. Carlos Lee has struck out and popped up to Offerman at second base. Garcia Parra at short goes to Offerman for one back to Stanley, but Lee able to beat the relay. And Sox get the lead man. Ordonia is at second. Lee is safe at first on the fielder's choice. Too deep for Numa, uh, Nomar and a couple of steps to his right, and that's going to cost the double play. It's a good pitch by Merka that change up away, but he had to go a long way for it. And then a much more difficult throw. When you have to back off the bag like that as a second base, when you can't come charging across, obviously that makes it a little bit longer the first base, and that's going to be the difference. One out in the Chicago six, but Singleton takes one wide. Anytime that shortstop's on the move going away from second, the second baseman really has to uh, kind of hang around that bag and not come across too soon. Ninety-eight pitches for Merker here. Just one out into the sixth inning. If he's able to make it through the sixth inning, it'll probably be his last. Oh. 
Three balls, one strike on the Chicago rookie center fielder. Chris Singleton, uh, one of 12 White Sox to make their Major League debut here in the 99 campaign for Jerry Manuel. 3 1 pitch, and it's 3 2. Merker has labored uh, throughout the ball game, but has been able to keep the White Sox to just the two runs that they picked up back in the fourth inning on the two out base hit by Darren Jackson. He has given up six hits. Three two pitch, Singleton line drive, speared at second base by Offerman. Two outs. Well, he may not make it through the sixth as Jimmy Williams coming out now with the right handed coming to the plate. Nicely timed by Offerman at second base. Take a base hit away from Singleton. Thinking about the double play, but uh, the runner at first base lead not that far off the bag. Jimmy making the call of the bullpen with the right hand of Canerco coming up. He's going to go for Garza. So he got to everything he needed out of Kent Merker in this ballgame. Merker leaves with the two run lead, having worked the first five and two thirds innings. El Guapo. Rich Garces makes his way in. Bell Atlanta Mobile call to the bullpen. Rich Garces is on the other end of the phone. We'll take a break. Back with more baseball from Comiskey Park right after this. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Red Sox have the 4-2 to two lead. Well, what's brewing tomorrow night in the front row? Well, the hockey season is here, and the Bruins are once again counting on number 77 to lead in the quest for the Lord Stanley. We'll find out what makes Bork so special as he enters his 21st NHL season. And Rhode Island was the host of this year's Gravity Games. Meet the street luges, skateboarders, and bike riders that tore up the tracks and streets of Providence. Don't miss a minute tomorrow night at 6.30 in the front row. Now look who's back in the front row here, right in broadcast booth land. Looking on from the press box is uh, one of his Red Sox friends, Rich Garces, will take over now on the mound. 28th appearance for Garces on the season, a record of 5-1. and one. The last time he worked was against the Orioles on the 25th. Two innings in that ball game and had four strikeouts against Baltimore. Carlos Lee at first base. Two outs here, bottom of the sixth inning. Rich Garces to work to Paul Canerco. Lee at first base, only four steals on this season. He's been caught a couple of times. But sometimes with two outs, uh, if you forget about him, to try to get that man in the scoring position. has struck out, flied to center. He's over two. Two very flat breaking balls uh, for Rich for the first two pitches. has been a better hitter as the season has gone on 203 in April 280 in May 279 in June up that to 420 in July no help, no. he has hit at a 318 clip since the first of July a stronger second half Another breaking ball from Garces misses a serene one Right hand is this season have only hit 137 off Garces. Put it down on the count here, three and one. It's a guy that has some power. 23 home runs for Canerco. There's a strike on the outside corner, three and two. No full count on the hitter. Carlos Lee at first base will be off with a three-two pitch. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Runner goes, 
three two pitch ground ball base hit dribble up side of the infield into left field and the White Sox have two on with two outs. Now that's why they were trying to throw him breaking balls early in the count. Instead they fell behind had to come with the fastball and Kermurko picks up his first base hit a ground ball pass balance in a third base. All tied in the hit department now seven for each team but the Red Sox still with the 4 2 lead. Aaron Jackson the left fielder bats lifts the breaking ball to left field Roy O'Leary backs up the step or two makes the catch and that will retire beside no runs two hits two left we go to the late innings in this one the Red Sox lead the White Sox 4-2. of the seventh inning at Comiskey Park. The Red Sox magic number is one. They've got the 4-2 lead over the White Sox. Top of the seventh inning. New pitcher for Chicago. Jim Parquet working the first six innings and Sean Lowe now is on here in the seventh. What a nice season for the White Sox. 61st appearance. A 3 and one record. 3.66 ERA. Ranks among the lead leaders in relief with those 91 innings. 57 strikeouts and 86 hits. Last time Lowe worked in a ball game was uh, against the Twins on Saturday, an inning in that ball game. And quite a few guys out in that bullpen. They got about uh, eight or nine pitches in the expanded roster. Well stocked out there. Jose Offerman leads off for the Red Sox. John Valentin, Omar Garcia, Para follow here in the top of the seventh. Single in the first inning, scored the Red Sox first run off of him, walked him a third, fly it out to Ordonez in right field in the fifth. High walk numbers, 44 walks in the 91 innings that he's worked so far this year. <laughs> Offerman hits this one pretty well out to left field. Back is Darren Jackson at the wall and will run it down at the 375 side all the way to the warning track. Good carry going to the opposite field there for Jose Offerman. <laughs> Offerman standing on second base like he can't believe it. He thought he hit that ball uh, with a chance to maybe go off the wall. High fastball tailing away from Offerman, hit it well, but he'll take Darren Jackson all the way back to the warning track to make the catch. It looked like when it left the bat, it was probably in there into the gap, but uh, had a chance. 375 though to the gaps here in uh, Comiskey. Old Comiskey was a pitcher's ballpark. New Comiskey, a big ballpark as well. 347 down the lines, 375 to the power alleys, and then 400 to straightaway center field. John Valentin chops it to third. Craig Wilson makes the play to throw to Canerco. Two quick outs. Two go on here in the seventh. That brings up Nomar Garcia Parra. His home run two innings ago broke a 2 2 tie and gave the Red Sox the lead. Back to the fifth inning. John Valentin with a two out single. Nomar follows and Nomar goes deep for the home run. Sox take the lead 4 2. And that's where we are right now. 4-2 Boston. Bases empty. Two outs in the top of the seventh. Omar has bumped his average up a couple of points in this one so far to 358. Nine-point lead over Derek Jeter of New York. A large group of Red Sox fans right behind their dugout. And every time a Red Sox pitcher gets a couple of strikes, they're standing up, clamping uh, for the strikeout. A lot of folks, of course, travel on business to the Chicago area, and a number of them uh, like to come out to ball games at night. A lot of Red Sox fans behind their dugout. Good to be here tonight and see the Red Sox wrap up at least the wild card. Bottom of the postseason for the second straight year as Garcia Parra draws the two out walk. 51 walks now for Garcia Parra. It's one thing that he has become in the second half of the season more patient, and of course, uh, by drawing a walk or two in a game, that certainly helps in that batting race. Hey, hey, hey. 
Lamar at first with two outs. Here's first baseman Mike Stanley, who's had a solid night at the plate. to Wilson at third and that will retire beside no runs no hits no errors in one left seventh inning stretch here in Chicago Red Sox four White Sox two four two Red Sox lead as we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning next Red Sox action coming your way here on Nessa we won't have to wait long just about 20 minutes after game one it'll be game two the Red Sox at the White Sox and we've got Pat Rapp going in that ball game for Boston that's coming your way right after this one Red Sox playing their first double header of the 1999 season. We mentioned earlier the White Sox have had seven of them so far. They had a lot of weather problems earlier in the year. Hit the weather problem last night, too, here at Comiskey Park tonight. Rich Garces, who came on to get the last out of the sixth inning, works to Brooke Fordyce as we get underway in the bottom of the seventh. ball for a strike. Kent Merker started the ball game for Boston. Worked the first five and two thirds. It's now up to the bullpen. Fordyce has fly to center and popped to short. Last ball from Garces. One ball, one strike. Notice between innings, Garces uh, into that clubhouse and took off that sweatshirt that he had on. A lot of pitchers don't like to work with the sleeves and uh, Gosh, it's apparently one of those. Wardyes lines it to left field. Back goes O'Leary. He can't run this one down all the way to the 375 sign. Wardyes digging for second and will go in with a leadoff double. It's three doubles now in the game for the White Sox. Good hard line drive by Fordyce and right in that gap uh, just to the left of O'Leary. You have to chase it back to that bullpen area and by the time he gets it back in Fordyce with the leadoff double. So by no means is this game uh, yet in the bag for the Red Sox only a two run ball game. And a runner in scoring position nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh top of the order Mike Caruso coming up for Chicago. So with a bunt attempt, foul back to the screen. He is 0 for 3 tonight, is grounded to second. Had one go right down the first baseline, handled by Merker, who tagged him out in the third, and then Merker had to go in the air to snare his comebacker in the fifth inning, throw him out at first base. 0 for 3 for Caruso. He is the toughest guy in the lead to strike out. He's number one, Nomar is number two. And one of the reasons uh, for Caruso, he very seldom around the two strikes. Doesn't strike out much, doesn't walk much. They make something in the papers here that he has more errors than he does walks this year. 24 errors at short, and he's walked only 20 times. That's your ideal leadoff uh, numbers. When you look at that toughest to strike out list, you've got Caruso, Garcia, Parra, Chris Singleton, Ordonez, and Darren Lewis. All five guys in the top ten in the uh, league is toughest to strike out. Garces falls behind Caruso now, three and one.
Sox have four dice at second base. Nobody out. Full count on the hitter Caruso. Russo puts it in play. Ground ball to short. Garcia Parra throws out his counterpart, but taking third base on the play with only one out is Brooke Fordyce. Good base running by Fordyce. Anytime that ball's directly at you, you have to know, first of all, where that chalk shot's playing behind you. And then if it's right at you or to your left, you can go ahead and go to third base. Russo making the contact on the changeup down and away. And he'll be out at first base, but he does advance that base runner. Looks like we've got a pinch hitter coming up for Wilson. Greg Norton coming up, the switch hitter for the White Sox. 255 on the year, 16 homers, 50 runs batted in. Had a six-game hitting streak, uh, snapped at Minnesota on Monday night going over three. He goes after the first pitch and pops it foul. That'll be back in the seats. I think we're headed for a huge crowd tonight. A little better, obviously, than when we started a couple of hours ago. We had about 100 people in the seats. baseball summer here in Chicago and the Windy City sports fans have moved on to other sporting events here late in the year although Sosa still has them excited in that home run race with McGuire although that doesn't seem to have uh, nearly the uh, implications of the excitement that it had a year ago everybody's spoiled now they've set different standards for home run leaders to come a long way. He's there to make the catch. Tagging at third base, holding up his four dice. O'Leary guns it in. Fly ball to shallow left off the bat of Norton for the second out of the inning. That sounded like one of those uh, broken bat bloops that was going to drop in for a base hit, but instead O'Leary was playing fairly shallow. Able to make the play, and all uh, the base runner four dice is doing is trying to draw a throw and hopes he draws a bat throw. Fordyce at third base with two outs now and Ray Durham at the plate for the White Sox. Durham has grounded out and twice flied out in the ball game. A bad idea by Durham. He has both Stanley and Offerman deep on that right side. Sox bullpen. That's a strike on the outside corner. Three and two to count on Durham. is trying to nail down the final out here in the bottom of the seventh inning payoff pitch and Durham hits it high in the air out to right field Lewis going back Buford is there and it's going to be Buford just shy of the warning track to make the catch and that will retire the side so no runs the leadoff double goes for North for Chicago Fordyce is stranded at third seven complete here at Comiskey the Red Sox closing in it's 4-2 as we head to the eighth
seven complete. The Red Sox with the 4-2 lead over the White Sox. We remind you this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Boston Red Sox may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Boston Red Sox. That'll be a little slow getting underway here, top of the eighth inning. We will tell you that Greg Norton has gone in defensively for Wilson at third base. We'll have a pitching change on the mound. Brian Daubach has been announced as a pinch hitter for the Red Sox, and as soon as they announced him pinch hitting for Butch Husky, Jerry Manuel makes his way out of the White Sox dugout, and he's going to make a pitching change. He'll get one of the left-handers he has down in the bullpen. Daubach in to pinch hit for Husky. The call has gone out to the Chicago pen. That looks to be Jesus Pena making his way in. We'll check. We'll take a break and uh, back with more baseball as the Bell Atlantic Mobile call to the bullpen has been answered. Pitching change here in Chicago. More baseball right after this. Back at Comiskey Park. Red Sox with the 4-2 to two lead. Now don't forget we have sports desk for you every morning. Bob Rogers gets you started. 15 minute fast paced show. It runs from 5 o'clock in the morning on. You can see it every morning right here on your New England Sports Network. Tonight on Nesson, meet Jesus Pena. 24th appearance for Pena on the season. He was called up uh, to the White Sox from Birmingham in double-A baseball on August the 6th. He's making his 24th appearance for the White Sox. Only 18 innings and 17 hits. A lot, a lot of walks. 22 walks and 17 strikeouts. Daubach will pinch it for the Red Sox. Daubach after the first pitch, line drive, base hit, left field. Daubach against the left hander gets the Red Sox started with a pinch hit single here in the eighth. And why waste time? Pick on that first fastball from the lefty. We may have a pinch runner for Daubach over at first base. John Nunnally coming out to pinch run. No Nunnally in the ball game. Pinch running for Daubach. Lead off man aboard for the Red Sox. Roy O'Leary will be the hitter. O'Leary one for two tonight, plus a walk. O'Leary has bounced back to the mound, walked in the fourth inning, and been single to left his last trip in the sixth. Four runs, eight hits for the Red Sox. Two runs, eight hits for the White Sox. No balls, two strikes. Austin jumped in front in the first inning. Single by Offerman, double by Garcia Parra. Sacrifice fly by Mike Stanley made it 1 0. And then the double by Butch Husky made it 2 0 in favor of the Red Sox. White Sox tied it on a two out bloop single to left by Darren Jackson in the fourth inning. Omar Garcia Parra broke the tie with a two run homer in the fifth, and O'Leary hit by a pitch. Well, so far, uh, Jesus Payne has done a heck of a job. A base hit to Daubach. He gets ahead of O'Leary 0 and 2, and he tries to go inside. Instead, he'll hit him right in the back. So uh, the move by Jerry Manuel has not exactly worked out. He got the lefty on the lefty. One had a base hit. One's been hit by a pitch. Now two on and nobody out. Veritek was asked to sacrifice in his last at bat. As if they try to do it again and move two men into scoring position. Tech gives no indication of Bunn as he takes one down low. Didn't work out last time. He got his job done by sacrificing, but then both Buford and Lewis had ground ball outs, and the Red Sox uh, did not get a run out of it. Veritek has five successful sacrifices on the year. One ball, one strike.
to left field. Aaron Jackson goes back. He is there. Will make the catch. And a strong throw by Jackson into third base. Base runners hold. Not only at second base, O'Leary at first, there's now one out. It's a heck of a throw by uh, Darren Jackson. None of them was tagging up, and he took a couple of steps to a third, but that throw right on the money by the left fielder for the White Sox. None of them would have been out by about uh, five feet going in. Kind of flat-footed, too, but a quick release. And not only had to hold his second base, one hop right to Greg Norton. And out again comes Jerry Manuel, and it looks like he's going to go to the bullpen again. Now we mentioned his bullpen is uh, well stocked with all the September call-ups. He has used Sean Lowe and Jesus Pena out of the pen so far tonight. Lowe, a right-hander, Pena, the lefty. And that'll be all for Pena. He works one third of an inning as the third as the third Chicago pitcher of the night. Like Bill Seamus coming in, the right hander. He's answering the Bell Atlantic mobile call from the bullpen. We'll take a break. Back with more baseball from Chicago right after this. Back here at Comiskey Park, top of the eighth inning. Red Sox with a 4 2 lead, trying to add to the two run advantage here in the top of the eighth inning. White Sox have gone to their bullpen again. This is the right hander, Bill Seamus. 69th appearance for Seamus. He uh, leads the staff in appearances uh, for the Chicago White Sox. 71 innings total. He's got a couple of saves on the season for the Chicago Ball Club. Of course, their leader, Bob Howry, has 25 saves. He has become their main closer. Damon Buford bats for the Red Sox, who have Nunnally at second base. Troy O'Leary at first with one out. Here's a drive to center field. Singleton goes back. Singleton goes way back. That's over his head. Off the wall. Nunnally will score. Here comes O'Leary. He's being waved home as well. Troy O'Leary scores as well. It's a long double for Buford. Two runs on the board for the Red Sox. And they now lead it 6-2. to two. Well, you've got to give credit to the pinch hitters this inning. Dorbach going up, swinging at the first pitch against the lefty to pick up the base hit. Buford has to face the right hand of Seamus. He picks on the first pitch. And because Singleton was playing very shallow, he had no chance on this long fly ball. Couldn't read also by O'Leary at first base. Uh, he also knew that there was not going to be a catch. He just continues to run those bases, and he'll score the second run. Nunnally first, and then O'Leary. Aaron Lewis follows out to right center field. Singleton runs that down. Buford tags at second and moves over to third. <laughs> Red Sox up by four now. 6-2 here in the top of the eighth inning. Damon Buford at third with two outs. Red Sox are six outs away from sewing up a spot in the playoffs. of the order and Jose Offerman takes one from Seamus up and in one ball no strikes mm, Offerman kind of stares out at Seamus after that inside fastball wasn't it Billy Seamus that had the problem with the Yankees uh, they said that uh, Randolph was calling Bach or something and he had a little thing with Derek Jeter a shouting match I'm not sure if it was Seamus quite sure it was Seamus right now having his problems with Offerman as he's fallen behind 3 and 0. Four straight and Offerman will walk down to first. First and third for the Red Sox with two outs and John Ballantin will be up. and third two outs John Valentin who's one for four tonight that 
Arlington lined to Wilson at third base in the first inning was called out on strikes on the third singled to left after a nice at bat in the fifth inning to extend the inning and give Nomar Garcia Parra a shot Garcia Parra followed with a home run to break the 2 2 tie and then John bounced out to Wilson again at third in the seventh so he's one for four. Buford over third base. That was Offerman at first. First and third with uh, two outs for the Red Sox. Two runs in here in the top of the eighth. Goal since day one of spring training. Postseason play. The Red Sox magic number is one. They are six outs away. with control problems it's three and one he walked off from it on four pitches has missed on three of four offerings to Valentin three one pitch is popped up Canerco coming over by the Boston dugout and will not have room. just out of his reach down the dugout steps but Conerco had time to maybe walk down those a couple of those steps and still try to make the play. You can do that. You can go into a dugout to make a catch. Obviously, you get no help over at the visiting dugout, and he's right at the top step, and it'll only miss it by a step or two. Fordyce to catch her also there. That's an effort there by a team that's a thousand games out of first place. Why risk injury? I was just thinking that. Not a crucial play from the Chicago point of view. Back with the payoff pitch, and it's down low. The Red Sox have loaded the bases for Nomar Garcia Parra. Nomar this year 190 hits 42 doubles 27 homers 104 runs batted in well mini Fenway over here behind the Red Sox dugout uh, they're loving all of this after the first pitch chops it to short Caruso will make the play over to first base in time to get Nomar and the Red Sox score two, leave the bases loaded they've got themselves a 6 2 advantage as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Back here at Comiskey Park, Red Sox with a 6-2 lead over the White Sox here in game one. We'll check our game summary. Merker got the start. He worked five and two-thirds innings, gave up two runs, six hits, struck out two, walked one. Rich Garces working a scoreless one and a third in relief. Omar Garcia Parra has a double, a two-run homer. Avon Buford had a big two-run doubled in the top of the eighth inning to get two more on the board for the Red Sox. It's 6-2 Boston. White Sox bat here in the bottom of the eighth. Our new pitcher for Boston, it'll be Derek Lowe. Last appearance for Derek Lowe it was against the Orioles on the 27th. Lowe pitched an inning in that ball game, a couple of hits. 73rd appearance of the season. That's in the top 10 in the American League. Agli Ordonez leading off of the White Sox here in the eighth inning. Carlos Lee, Chris Singleton to follow. Hot shot, base hit, perhaps extra bases down the right field line. Ordonia stumbles as he rounds first, but still will cruise into second with a leadoff double. He's had a heck of a night on base four times, two singles, a double, and a walk for Ordonia's. Again, right down that uh, right field line, the pitch away from low, and some good hitting by Ordonia's. As I mentioned earlier, this kid is just a real good ball player for the White Sox, something uh, they can build around. And those two extra runs look awful big for the Red Sox in this one. A four run pad here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Carlos Lee bats. Lee fouling it over towards the White Sox dugout. Carlos Lee tonight is struck out, popped to second, and safe on the fielder's choice. The 
Yankees and Baltimore delayed by rain tonight at Camden Yards. It'll be slow getting underway if they get underway at all. That might have been all that junk that was here for the last couple of days heading east. Got there in a hurry if that's the case. Still no balls, two strikes. Fly ball and back is short. Garcia Parra finally called off by Troy O'Leary, but a fielder comes in and handles it. One out. Red Sox are five outs away as Lee flies out to O'Leary and left. Sox lead the White Sox six to two in the first of two here at Comiskey Park tonight. Rookie center fielder Chris Singleton who has one hit tonight in three trips. Singleton a native of California lives in Mesa Arizona now. Breaks the bat, sends it foul right down the left field line, dropped by a fan in the front row. Had it, but dropped it. Somebody's got to hold his leg so he can uh, reach over and get that souvenir. Well, even better, they give it to the kid with the cotton candy. Having a heck of a night. Jumping on some cotton candy has a pretty good seat for the ball game. And now has a souvenir to take home as well. Low missing down and in. Two balls, one strike. Singleton at the plate. Canerco on deck for the White Sox. Derek Lowe, third pitcher to work tonight for Jimmy Williams. Merker, Garces, and now Derek Lowe. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Round ball towards Garcia Parr at short. That'll send the runner back to second. Nomar slings it over to first base in time to get Singleton. Nice play by Garcia Parr at two outs. Well, again, as we mentioned earlier in the ball game for Nomar, apparently that wrist feeling much better. He's had a great offensive game and also a great defensive game. Just barely getting Singleton at first. Certainly not the way you would teach your kids to play shortstop. Everything seems to be off balance for Nomar, but uh, <laughs> he gets it done. It's not broken. Don't fix it. Oh, don't even think about trying to fix it. <laughs> Leave it alone. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Here's Paul Konerko. Matt breaks. Low breaks so many of them. Ground ball here to short. Garcia Parra throws out Konerko. The Red Sox are three outs away. It's 6-2 as we head to the ninth. Baseball has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. By Avis. Speed and personal service is what everyone at Avis is dedicated to delivering. We try harder for you. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you, but three most important words are, hey, beer man. By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And by Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas. Mobile Speed Pass. It's free and it's only at Mobile. 
Sunsets here in Chicago. Red Sox take a 6-2 lead here to the ninth inning. We'll get a new pitcher here for the White Sox. Carlos Castillo now will take over on the mound. He'll be the fourth, the fifth pitcher to work for the White Sox tonight, following Parquet, Lowe, Pena, and Seamus to the mound. Looks like Carlos has put on a little weight since the last time uh, we saw him. My goodness. Last outing Friday, worked three and a third innings against the Twins, giving up the one run. Stanley leads off for the Red Sox here in the ninth inning. I'm not trying to make light of this, but didn't when there's something in the paper today about putting him on a liquid diet for some 15 days or something. Russo with short throws out Stanley. I think you're right. I read the same story. Stanley out on the ground ball to short. There's one gone. Red Sox three outs away from wrapping up the wild card. Darren Jackson, Bright, uh, uh, Brooke Fordyce, and then uh, Mike Caruso due up against Derek Lowe in the bottom of the ninth. John Nunnally, his first at bat. Nunnally has a couple of hits and nine trips for the Red Sox this year. Which Husky began the day as the Red Sox designated hitter. He was one for three with a double that produced a run back in the second. Ryan Daubach pinch hit in the eighth inning and singled. And now Nunnally comes through with a base hit with one out here in the ninth. <laughs> DH has produced three hits for the Red Sox tonight by three different players. Husky a double, a drive, and a run. Daubach with a base hit in that big two run eighth inning. And now Nunnally with a hit. Even Wally's wondering how much weight he put on since the last time he saw him. Foul back by O'Leary. One strike to count. Big difference here at Chicago as the Red Sox close in as opposed to what we would have had at Fenway Park over the weekend with the full house. But there are a number of Red Sox fans. Can you imagine being a Boston fan, being fortunate enough to be in this area on business? Obviously, tickets are to be had. Come out to the ball game and hopefully see the Red Sox wrap up things here tonight. Geez, I hope they don't charge the field after this. Rip up the sod and all that stuff. Small in numbers, but they're enthusiastic here tonight. See that familiar B on hats all over Comiskey Park. I think the Red Sox have the White Sox fans just about outnumbered tonight. Oh, yeah, go, if you're a White Sox fan, not really a whole lot of reasons to come out to the ballpark here late. <laughs> Nothing doing on the base pass on the pitch out. Two and one now, the count on O'Leary. Six runs, ten hits for the Red Sox. Two runs, nine hits for the White Sox. field or Donia's has a long way to come but he'll get there in time to make the catch the throw to Canerco at first base they will double off not only that will retire beside and so we go to the ninth inning a double play to end the top of the ninth Red Sox up by four six two
Here we go. Bottom of the ninth inning. Red Sox six. Chicago two. Aaron Jackson, Brooke Fordyce, and Mike Caruso. Hitters eight, nine, and one coming up for the White Sox here in the bottom of the ninth inning. They'll face a new Red Sox pitcher, Derek Lowe. Very effective in the eighth inning. Give up the leadoff double to Ordonez. Has set the side down in order, but Rod Beck gets the call here in the ninth. Tenth appearance for Beck in a Red Sox uniform. He's got three saves, a record of 0-1, 2.45 ERA. Last time out for Beck against Toronto. At one inning, three hits and three earned runs. That's the first blown save for Beck as a member of the Red Sox. And back at Chicago, where, of course, he was very popular on the north side of Chicago with the Cubs. Big story in one of the Chicago papers on Beck the other day, full page spread. The Red Sox tonight, Kent Merker, five and two thirds innings, two runs, six hits. Rich Garces work an inning in the third, scored us baseball. Derek Lowe pitched the eighth, and now Rod Beck on to work the ninth. Jimmy Williams, like everybody with the Red Sox, will be glad when this one is over. Jimmy, of course, had an experience a number of years ago as the manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. Where they had a lead down the stretch. They were involved in a great pennant race back in 1987 with Detroit for the Eastern Division crown. Two clubs played seven times the last ten days of the season. A lot of one-run games. Went into the Tiger Stadium the last weekend up by two with three to play, and Detroit prevailed. So Jimmy be very happy when the Red Sox wrap up business and clinch a spot in the postseason. Jackson has a couple of hits, a single, a double. He's driven in a couple of runs tonight. One ball, one strike. Little number here behind the plate foul. One and two, the count on Darren Jackson. Sox three outs away from victory number 91 on the year in a spot in the postseason. Fouled away again, still one and two. down the right field line. Two pitch by Beck, rolled to short. Nomar Garcia Parra makes the play over to Stanley, and there's one out. Gets the leadoff hitter, Darren Jackson, and the ground ball to Garcia Parra. One out, two to go. Brooke Fordyce. Takes a first pitch strike. Fordyce has flied to center, popped to short. His last trip in the seventh inning, opened the inning with a double to left. He is one for three tonight. One strike offering here from Beck. In the air to left field. After it goes O'Leary, won't catch up to this one all the way to the 375 sign. And Fordyce has his second straight double. And he's had O'Leary going to chase the ball down by that White Sox bullpen a couple of times tonight. Last at bat uh, coming against Garces, this time against Beck. It's the slider from Beck. And Fordyce two for four on the night. Both hits doubles. Four dice in second, one out here, bottom half the ninth inning, top of the order, Mike Caruso looks at strike one. Sox will advance to the postseason. 
A double play to end the ball game, and the Red Sox are headed for the playoffs for the second straight year. Of smiles. Sox have eliminated the Oakland A's. They can now set their sights on the New York Yankees, who start the day with a four and a half game lead. A slim chance for the Sox to catch them, but in any event, the Sox are headed for the postseason. Jerry, you knew it was coming, but when it finally arrives, it's always a relief. Uh, it's like we talked about, Bob. I mean, uh, from a distance, you know it's going to happen, but from a player's point of view, until it does happen, now it's uh, everybody's very relieved. As Jimmy Williams would say, they have finished up their business. They have gotten the win that will advance them to the postseason. Not a large gathering of Red Sox followers here at Comiskey Park tonight, but certainly an enthusiastic one. On hand to see the Red Sox advance to at least the wild card with this win, 6-2, over the Chicago White Sox. And a terrific season for Boston, as we mentioned, it starts from day one of spring training. Your goal is to advance to the postseason, get to that postseason party, see what happens. And the Red Sox, for the second straight year, for the third time in the last five years, will play baseball well into the month of October. Six runs, ten hits, one error for the Red Sox, two runs, ten hits, no errors for the White Sox. Kent Merker, who goes the first five and two-thirds innings, picks up the win. He is now 2-0 and on the year. Beck picked up his save, his fourth of the season. And Parquet, the starter and loser for the White Sox, his record now falls to 9-15. and We're honored now as Dan Duquette is getting set up with a... Uh, little microphone he can join us and join the celebration up here in the broadcast booth executive vice president general manager dan duquette are you heaving a little bit of sigh of relief even though you knew it was coming it's nice to have it over huh? well it's nice to complete the deal like any deal and uh, we're real happy and proud to be in the playoffs for the second year in a row it's the first time we've done it in a long time and uh, we're still in the hunt for the east division but at least we got the first step on our journey to fulfill the goals of all red sox fans and uh satisfaction i mean uh, you know you've been involved now in a couple of playoffs you've had a great record here with the red sox but i would think this team has to be special uh, because of everything that went on in the offseason uh, losing mo and the team getting off to a good start not high expectations from a lot of the folks around but uh, this club battled and battled and battled from day one well they really did and uh People weren't expecting a, a real good ball club from the Red Sox this year, but in spring training, they made a commitment to each other to put the Mo Vaughn situation behind them and then to go forward with the season. And we had a good uh, pitching staff and we had everybody else returning. So uh, the fact that Pedro had a super year and we had uh, Garcia Parra and then the emergence of the younger ball players like Veritek and Derek Lowe, uh, uh, that, you know, that's made for a real good season. I know in talking to you before, you've always said you want to be competitive and be in the postseason every year. This is two years in a row now, three of the last five years. Well, you know, if you have a good team every year, one of these times when you get to that dance floor, you're going to find a partner. <laughs> so hopefully this will be the year. We, we do have better pitching this year going into the playoffs than we've had in the past. We've got a little bit more depth to our starting rotation. And with the addition of Beck and the emergence of Lowe, we've got two really good relievers in the pen. So that should give us a good opportunity. We match up pretty good against all three teams in the playoffs. When you look at this team, there are a lot of times during the course of a season where uh, things don't look so well. But then you, you have big performances by uh, Brian Rose when he comes up to the big leagues. You have Pena come up and do a good job. I remember a couple of starts for Pat Rapp, uh, especially that one up in Toronto where he pulled the team out of a slump. So it's really been a combination of guys that have done the job. Well, you got to have a, a contribution from your minor league system. Our minor league people have done a great job. Kent Qualls, Wayne Britton, Ray Portovan, Jimmy Williams did a great job. Joe Kerrigan did a nice job. Uh, and, and day in and day out, uh, we've got a great work ethic in the organization. And these players, when they come to the ballpark, they expect to win. So I think that's a good situation. And as I said, one of these times we're going to come through with that, uh, all the hopes and dreams of every Red Sox fan. We had a lot of enthusiastic fans here tonight behind our dugout. Uh, and that was really good to see. 
One, uh, one last thing. Uh, when now it's kind of audition time, you've got to make some plans uh, for the playoff roster and uh, in particular pitching staff. You know two for sure. You know it's going to be Pedro and Saberhagen. But then uh, there's some question mark after that. And the way Ramon Martinez has pitched recently, the way Merker has pitched, I would think that both those guys would be in consideration. Well, they're both pitching well. Uh, they, you know, they throw strikes and they change speeds. They work fast, so you should get pretty good defensive plays behind them. And uh, they have to be in strong consideration for us to be in our starting rotation during the playoffs. That's how we're setting up the team going in. And then that'll give us a little bit more depth uh, to our bullpen. So, uh, you know, it's a good situation for us. Well, Dan, thanks a lot for joining us, and congratulations. All right, thanks a lot, Jerry. It was a great uh, achievement for the organization, and we're real proud, and we appreciate the support of our fans. The second straight year, the Red Sox are on to the postseason. They win game one here, 6-2 to two over the Chicago White Sox. Time now for our Citizens Bank. Not your typical player of the ball game. And our choice is Nomar garcia Parra. Who else? Two for four. A home run, a double, two. A runs batted in. Nomar picks up another point on the batting average. Leads the American League. 357. Nomar garcia Parra, our Citizens Bank. Not your typical player. And the mobile extra mile play of the game. Damon Buford's double in the eighth inning. This gave the Red Sox a couple of insurance runs and made things easier for the last couple of innings. Mobile goes the extra mile for you. So it's the Red Sox on to the postseason. They beat the White Sox 6-2 here in game one. About 20 minutes, we'll have game two for you. Stay tuned, more Red Sox baseball coming your way right after this. Two at Comiskey, lots of empty seats. You can sit wherever you want. Wally found a good seat as well during this game. Butch Husky will help the Red Sox to the early 2-0 lead. He rips the double down the line and left. Nomar scores from second, it's 2-0. Meanwhile, Kent Merker was solid again for Jimmy Williams. Strikes out Paul Konerko, one of two strikeout victims over five and two-thirds innings. Gives up two runs on six hits. A little trouble in the fourth inning. Two out magic for the White Sox as Darren Jackson drops one in front of Troy O'Leary. It scores two, and it ties the game up at two. But it doesn't stay that way for very long. Omar hits this one pretty good to left field. Jackson is back at the wall for 375. Two. Yep, home run number 27 for Nomar. He now has 104 RBI, and the Red Sox added that 4-2 lead in the eighth inning. Damon Buford crushes one to deep center field. It's way back. It will score pinch runner John Nunnally. And Troy O'Leary also scores. As a matter of fact, Nunnally had a hit. He wasn't a pinch runner, a pinch hitter. 6-2, Sox two outs away. will advance to the postseason. A double play to end the ball game, and the Red Sox are headed for the playoffs for the second straight year. Well, the Red Sox getting it done in game one of the doubleheader. They don't have a whole lot of time now to celebrate clinching their playoff spot because they'll play another game in just about 15 minutes or so against the White Sox. Obviously, a lot of the reserves will be playing in that one. Garcia Parra, another big game, a double, the two-run home run. Buford, the two-run double to give the Red Sox a little extra cushion. The Sox clinch their second straight playoff berth. It's the first time they have done that since 1915 and 1916. The Red Sox have also made the playoffs in three of the last five years. And as it was mentioned before, Jimmy Williams becoming the first Red Sox manager to post back-to-back 90-win -back seasons since Don Zimmer did it back in the late 70s. We'll take a time out. We'll come back. We'll hear from Bob and Jerry. Jimmy was how he always was upbeat and always positive. And to his credit, Williams is notorious for giving players a chance. Nixon bidding for his third home run. High and deep in right and gone. Oh, yeah. I would have been out here. Probably. I would have, uh, I would have been out because you know some managers don't have the patience. Uh, that's fine, I respect that. It's no problem. Uh, but this this front office and, and Jim Williams and the coach staff had patience in me. Jimmy Williams was the guy who was out there working with him in early hitting every day, and it was Jimmy Williams who said, "This guy can play. I'm going to stick with him. I'm going to stick with him." And he did. And, and look at how Nixon has turned uh, his season around. So I, I I think he's in that that pat phrase of being a player's manager in a lot of ways jimmy is there's, there's a great deal of respect in that clubhouse for him 
and a great deal of respect all across baseball for the job Jimmy Williams has done with the Red Sox. He is obviously the favorite to win American League Manager of the Year. There have been other good jobs as well, Art Howe with Oakland, and of course all the teams that will make the postseason. But Jimmy Williams, pretty much a lock to win American League Manager of the Year. The Red Sox still want to win Game 2 of this doubleheader because they still have a shot to win the American League Eastern Division title away from the Yankees. They're almost ready for Game 2. So back to Chicago we go, Bob and Jerry.